welcome to our monthly Praying with the Icon of Our Mother of Perpetual Help. The theme of my reflection is Mary, Cause of Our Joy. Please join in singing, Oh, with what joy we sing to Mary. moments now and simply gaze with soft eyes on the icon. Allow God into your heart through the icon. Listen now to the Word of God. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. During those days, Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked upon his handmaid's lowliness. Behold, from now on will all ages call me blessed. The Gospel of the Lord. There are certain persons in our lives who, when we see them or hear their voices, make our hearts skip a beat with delight. They are the ones who make us laugh when everything seems gray. They are the ones who have strong arms and soft hearts who wrap us in a smothering bear hug that makes everything seem all right. They are the wise ones who have weathered many a storm, and whose assurances that all will be well can be trusted absolutely. They are the joyful ones whose voice and warm embrace draw us into the presence of God's love. Such is the meeting of Mary and Elizabeth in the visitation scene. The moment Elizabeth heard Mary's voice, both her own heart and the baby in her womb leap for joy. 
Mary undoubtedly felt the same. For the first words out of Mary's mouth when she meets Elizabeth are a jubilant song of praise. My soul magnifies the Lord, says Mary, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Mary is happy. This young Galilean woman was filled with joy at the prospect of having a child. And she was filled with joy at the sight of Elizabeth, who was also expecting a child. Both of them are joyful at God's activity. Joy virtually leaps off the page in this story of the visitation and in Mary's great Magnificat. This is not so far from our own experience. Think of occasions when both you and a friend or you and someone in your family have received good news at the same time. Is anything more joyous? How exciting it is to celebrate together. So Mary sets out with haste and on greeting Elizabeth, she opens her mouth in praise. Mary is so filled with joy for what God has done for her. Like many of us in times of good news, we feel as though we are bursting with joy and want to declare our praise to God. I remember accompanying a woman named Michelin Nagoyan, who was a widow from Cameroon on a bus trip from Boston, Massachusetts to Newark, New Jersey. She had been living in a homeless shelter for several years and was hoping to be approved for her green card. We arrived at the Office of Homeland Security early that morning and spent nearly the whole day waiting for her case to be heard. And finally, just before 4 p.m., she met with an official and was approved. We were so elated we jumped and screamed with delight in the hallway of the building. And people around us who were sitting in the hallway joined in our exuberance by clapping. And then to celebrate, we both ate a hamburger and fries with a slice of apple pie in the bus station. We then boarded the bus at 6 p.m., arrived back in Boston around 10. Michelin had one final request. Mon père, she said, could you please open the church? I need to visit Mama Mary's shrine. So I did. And once there, Michelin began to dance and sing in French her own version of the Magnificat to our mother perpetual help. She was so filled with joy at what God and Mary had done for her. And that night was just the beginning of many events to follow where God would smile on Michelin's lowliness. Other Bible stories also reveal great joy. In the Old Testament, for instance, in the book of Maccabees, there is the account of Eleazar's final words before his death. His speech would truly rival similar accounts of many Christian martyrs for its beauty and depth of faith. Even in the face of torture and certain death, he professes his desire to remain faithful to God's commands. In the course of his bold profession of faith, he reveals the mystery at work in the heart of every martyr. I am not only enduring terrible pain in my body, but also suffering, suffering it with joy in my soul because of my devotion to him. Pain in the body, but joy in the soul. It's truly a mystery of the human heart that both emotions can be felt within us at the same time. Two different, very contrasting felt experiences at one and the same time. Without a doubt, however, it is joy that is the deeper. It is joy that governs and takes the lead. For without that joy, there would be no martyrdom, no witness to something or rather to someone who makes such heroic suffering possible. 
Still, while we may marvel at such witnesses like Eleazar, we, for our part, tend to distance ourselves from this experience, never imagining something as dramatic as martyrdom as being our final fate in life. However, martyrdom, or even a long-term suffering, are not the only conditions that cultivate this deep joy. We can see this deep joy in simpler ways that work in many people's lives. All of us know people suffering with serious illness who, through their faithful relationship with the Lord, maintain a genuine joy. Yes, there is a pain in the body, but deep joy in the soul. There are those who may lack a physical pain, but in the circumstances of their lives, no mental anxiety and stress. Again, we have seen the joy of faith that breaks through the pain. This joy I speak of is not simply a fleeting feeling or effervescent emotion. It is a deep-seated result of one's connection to God. Religious joy is always about relationship. This joy has an object, and the object is God. Joy is happiness in God. So what about you? Are you presently experiencing physical, emotional, perhaps even spiritual pain? If you are, what can I offer you as a way to help you bear and endure such pain and suffering without allowing it to diminish your hope and squander your faith? Who can help us to go deep in search of the one who loves us in our pain and who promises each of us, even with that pain, a deep down joy? Who invites us to come to her so that she might bring Emmanuel into our wounded hearts to shine on our darkness so that our nights are no longer dark, but bright as day? Mary can truly be the cause of our joy. For no one has such an abundance of joy to give as Mary does. Her soul rejoices, magnifies, exalts the wonders of God. The key to, to, to how she finds this joy lies in the manner in which she is able to hear the word of God speaking to her in every event. St. Luke emphasizes this gift of Mary several times in his infancy narrative when he concludes each event in the story with the statement, and Mary treasured all these things in her heart. So it isn't simply the memory and the emotion that memory evokes. It's the memory filtered through in light of God's word. It's the memory with a message revealed, a mystery unveiled, a glory manifested, a truth presented which brings joy and wonder, and hope, and gratitude. Proclaim the greatness of God, Rejoice in God, my Savior. Rejoice in God, my Savior. Proclaim the greatness of God. Rejoice in God, my Savior. Blessed, the 
Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. strength of his arm and scattered the proud of heart. Proclaim the greatness of time, the rejoice in God, rejoice in God, rejoice in God, my Savior. the mighty from their thrones and and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with all good gifts and and sent the rich away. Proclaim the greatness of We thank you for joining us in praying with the icon of our mother perpetual help. Please join us again next month on Saturday, August, September 17th, 2022. The Lord be with you. May the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, a perpetual help, be with you to defend you, within you to sustain you, before you to lead you, behind you to protect you, and above you to bless you all the days of your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulce, Do et Spes Nostra Salve.